Good morning. Welcome back to Morning at 10 TV. My name is Malaki Vilodera and today we are looking at the cost of domestic tourism. The tourism sector contributes around 9.9% of the GDP and so we'll be looking at how does the cost factor come into play? Why don't we have many, you know, Ugandan citizens visiting their own country? Um, Andrew Chamagero pointed clearly that uh, we are having many honeymooners who opt to go out of the country to enjoy their honeymoon as opposed to here in Uganda. And yet we have amazing sites, amazing places that we all can go to. And so in studio to talk about that is someone in that industry who has been a player for over 16 years now, Mr. Dennis Ntege, who is the director of Raft Uganda Adventures. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Thank Let's you for start off. Me. You're welcome. Let's start off with looking at uh, the current trends amongst Ugandans mm. when it comes to local domestic tourism. Domestic tourism. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And I'm glad to be um, here. Ugandans are starting to travel. And you will be surprised. Ugandans are traveling. But certainly there needs to be a lot a lot out there to encourage them to come more, to encourage them to, uh, you know, love their country and explore. Mm -hmm. Options are available, but people don't know about these options. Cost certainly is a big factor. Mm -hmm. And cost alone will um, affect the inflow into your properties, for example, if you're a lodge owner, all at the destination, in the parks, the guys, uh, the guys out on the islands, the cost will be a serious and a very big consideration right. for any Ugandan to come through. Mm -hmm. So that, if managed well, brings in the numbers. Brings in the numbers. Brings in the numbers. For 16 years, um, you've been in the space. Can you give us figures um, at a percentage? What percentage of Ugandans have you seen coming, you know, to your place, on and off, on and off? How, what's, what's the current trend like? Well, um, for, for the rafting business, for example, right. I have been doing this for a long, long time. And I have seen numbers grow from uh, just 1% of, uh, of, your, of your total numbers growing steadily to about uh, 5 to 10 to 15 and some of us, some of our businesses actually uh, take a lot of pride in um, the domestic tourism. And for me, per se, with, as Raft Uganda, we have about 40% uh, or 30% of our clientele being uh, from the domestic market. That is uh, both the Ugandans, the residents. And we are seeing a positive trend and a positive vibe. Mm -hmm. The different, uh, the different uh, strategies that we've uh, put in place and also uh, uh, different uh, packages, really, that uh, Ugandans can pick up on and be able to enjoy their country mm -hmm. at reasonable price, one, but also getting the super quality service. Super quality service. So we'll yes. get to service um, a little bit later on yeah. um, in our discussion. Let's get down to the options that are there. You said that we have different packages for Ugandans, for residents who live here, expatriates, and also for the foreign tourists. Correct. Let's get down to the numbers. Today we're, looking, we're talking about how then can we get big numbers of Ugandans coming to such sports as yours. So for a Ugandan, what packages do you have in terms of cost? For, for me, let me give you a scenario. For mm -hmm. me, who wants to come at Raft Uganda Adventures and spend a weekend? So a weekend, uh, let's say I will get there on a Friday, then I'll go back to the city, Kampala, come back to Kampala, um, maybe Sunday evening. What ranges, what figures are we looking at? Well, uh, for starters, I will, uh, I will, I'll sell you a, a package that uh, will uh, fit within your choice of days. Right. So I leave Kampala on a Friday evening. Get into public transport if you don't have a, a, a vehicle of your own. But if you have a vehicle of your own, a fuel cost to Ginger is about, say, about 60,000 in an average liter vehicle, an mm -hmm. average 1.5 cc or 2,000 cc. Mm -hmm. Say you have a, a cost of 100,000 for mm -hmm. your vehicle to mm -hmm. and from. Mm -hmm. Drive through to Jinja. Let's say 120. Let's say 120. Right. Okay. Go through to Jinja. You can have a stop of a, in uh, Mavira Rainforest, in the rainforest in Mavira. Go do some zip lining. The cost is about uh, 60,000 for zip lining. Zip just for Raft Uganda? Not is for the Raft Uganda. Okay. I'm trying to package. L I'm trying to give you a package uh -huh. that is uh, 
affordable to Uganda. That can give me that a can full give experience three days. from Kampala. Correct. Before I get to you. Before okay. you get to me. All right. So get into the Maria Rainforest. Do a, a zip line challenge. Okay. For about 60,000. All right. See? Then continue through to Jinja. Mm -hmm. We have uh, different accommodations depending on what you want to depending on what you want to uh, depending on what you want to uh, uh, get. Yes. We have accommodation say for 35,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can opt to come. Mm -hmm. If you have your own tent. If you don't have your own tent, we can provide a tent. Yes. And you get out to camp. Okay. We have so a river base. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, a, a, a river base site uh, called Tulina Riverside Lodge. Mm -hmm. They have a camping site mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. They have uh, some accommodation. Mm -hmm. If you want to upscale your accommodation, we give you different options. So get in there, spend the night. So accommodation, we're looking at around 35,000. Around 35,000. Right. At uh, either tourist base. So we have, we have a range of uh, options to give and to our customers. And this is a uh, basic cost for a common Ugandan like me. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, okay. it is. And All that, right. And that, at the, say at the tourist bay guest house, you will be able to uh, get breakfast alongside it. So it's bed and breakfast Correct. for 35,000. Correct. All right. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, then the next day, we pick you up in the morning. You will pick now if as I rough have, Uganda. If uh -huh. you don't have your own if vehicle, if I have my vehicle, we've already calculated one twenty for fuel. Correct. Leave right. your vehicle at the place of uh, at the place of your board. Then we pick you up okay. in the morning. That's a package. Now this is the package for rough Uganda. Okay. We'll pick you up in the morning for mm. a cost of only two hundred and fifty thousand shillings. We're going to pick you up in the morning. We'll give you breakfast. We, we shall give you lunch on your trip. Mm -hmm. We'll give you a barbecue at the end mm -hmm. with beers and sodas mm -hmm. and drop you off where we picked you up from. If we picked you up from Kampala, we'll drop you off in Kampala. If we picked you up in Jinja, we'll drop you off in Jinja. At, 250. at only, only 250,000 shillings. That's for a day. That's for a day trip. Okay. And we're going to give you the best white water rafting experience on the Nile. Is there a cheaper package? <laughs> well, 250k in a day. In a day. Oh, per yes. head. And oh, I yes. have a family. And you have a family. Mm -hmm. then this, this is an individual. If you have a family with children, we have different other packages. We have uh, what we call the family rafting trips okay. or the family floating trips. And these ones, we cost, uh, we cost them quite uh, at, at, at quite a low cost. Mm -hmm. So we will have uh, a, a cost, say, of about 100,000 shillings mm -hmm. for a family floating trip mm -hmm. for Ugandan adults. Okay. Then for a child, we'll cost it at 70,000 shillings. All right. And here we'll have uh, two hours on the river. Uh -huh. We'll give you sandwiches for lunch, a picnic lunch. We'll give you uh, water and all the fruits you would want on. Uh -huh. on uh, we'll give you the fruits, the fruits and water. Uh -huh. Give you the experience on the Nile, free photos. And you'll have an experience. We have an experience. Time. Okay. So let's just stick to that um, 250,000 okay. package mm -hmm. per person for a whole day to and fro. I've done my calculation, and mm -hmm. so everything comes to a total of, and we haven't factored in that um, it's a weekend, so <laughs> I still need accommodation for two extra nights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? Remember with our 250,000, we'll give you a free night. Oh, you yeah. will? We'll you okay, so night. one, one night off. Night. So one night off, and uh, so let's say this 35K, let's double it because we have a, a night that has not been catered for. Correct. So let's, okay, plus 35,000. So... That comes to a flat rate of 500,000 for, for a weekend. For two people. Can it yes. come lower? Yes, we can come lower. You see, now th this, is where, this is where the magic comes. If you want, for, uh, and, and we encourage this uh, to our fellow Ugandans, if you want to get some of these packages lower, travel in groups. Travel in groups. Because then okay. that way, that will guarantee you some super special deals. There are different people that are doing, uh, that are doing uh, domestic, tourism, uh, domestic tourism promotions. They will uh, get a group of people, get them together, and they will be able to negotiate this price and actually knock this price down to because what? it's volumes. To what? They will package up. Uh, for example, the guys that uh, have this amazing, amazing trip in October. They do the October travel month and mm. they travel to different parks. They will come for a price of about uh, 230000 to 300000 depending on how many people they have. Per head, per for head. a whole weekend. They will give you an experience, a travel from Kampala, you do uh, some zip lining, you do some rafting, and you party in the night. Mm -hmm. And then they will bring you back. Because they have groups, they're traveling in a group, they will be able to negotiate with the different destinations and the different... Uh, 
the different um, activity places to get these prices lower. So group travels will certainly give you the magic. So here we're seeing um, the policy of, you know, um, economics coming into play. Correct. So also for the tourism sector, that's a big factor when it, it comes to factor. costing. It is a big factor. Okay. All right. Mm. We've looked at the cost of, you know, us as Ugandans being tourists. And um, you said that if we go in groups, then the number can go down to roughly mm -hmm. 230,000 to around 300,000 if it's a lot per head. per head. And the secret is in going in numbers. That's Correct. what you said. Okay. So that aside, let's now get to the fact of me as a Ugandan wanting to invest in the tourism space. What will it take? Well, investing in the tourism in the tourism space uh, takes quite a lot. Okay. You have to have the passion for tourism. Remember, tourism uh, is a, a very, very delicate sector. And it's not that every other day it's going to be uh, gold and roses. Uh, it's quite delicate in the fact that uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it depends on uh, different other sectors to make money. So you need to have the patience. But at the same time, with the passion, you'll be able to invest in good quality products. Mm -hmm. Now, what does it take? It takes money. Every traveler wants a nice experience. Right. Will take a bit of exposure for you to make the right decisions, to invest in the right places, and, uh, and, and, and certainly more to, the, more to the investment. We need to get the right locations. If you are going to go and invest, for example, um, around an attraction of Queen Elizabeth National Park, or you're going to invest in an attraction around uh, Murchison, getting into the park is not easy because the park is uh, a regulated area. Right. Concessions come at a cost. Concessions are not that many for people to build accommodation or to actually do activities within the park. Mm -hmm. So unless space is opened up, then shall you be able to go and invest in the park. But people are, people are going around it. You are investing around all the outskirts of the park. So you buy the land, you go and build accommodation. Which is roughly how much? Let's do the math. It depends on where, it depends on what, it depends on which park you're going into. Yeah, but a rough figure, just in A average. rough figure, you would get a good ideal land for about, um, say, $15,000. Okay. Good, uh, you know, that this is averagely sized land. Mm -hmm. And then you'll end up, you, then you'll have to go into building an actual lodge. Now, depending on what sort of clientele you want to attract, mm -hmm. then your structures and the investment you put into your infrastructure will, the, the, the cost, the, the, the sort of uh, price you want to charge at the end mm -hmm. will determine what you build. Mm -hmm. But people are investing quite a lot of money in their businesses, a lot, in, especially the people that are building lodges. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all the challenges they are investing quite a lot mm -hmm. in these uh, properties. So, and that is yes. Yeah. And that is? And that is why, at the end of the day, they end up charging quite highly. Okay. So, I, I, I just want us to break it down for someone who maybe has, you know, um, ambitions of getting into the space as an investor. Mm -hmm. So, you've said getting land in the outskirts of a pack will cost around $15,000, you say? Say about 60 million shillings. Uh, yes. And that's this is about really averagely, uh, averagely sized land. Yes. That's around 60 million, you know, Uganda Correct. shillings. Correct. After that, what else will you need? You would certainly need drawings. Const you yes. will need uh, to construct. Yes. You would uh, probably... Depending, and this comes back to what I was trying to say. Depending on what sort of clientele you want to attract, it will still determine what sort of lodge you're going to build. So I'm a beginner, and of course, um, you people who have been in the space for quite a long time, you're mm -hmm. always preaching the message of starting small and mm -hmm. growing steadily. Mm -hmm. So I just want to build roughly two, you know, um, kind of structures, maybe cottages, that ca each cottage can accommodate maybe, you know, a family people, comfortably, a family. you know. How much say will it cost me? Say about With the cheapest materials. Maybe I just want to you know, uh, say about go 30, traditional. Say about 30 million All shillings. Right. 30 uh -huh. to 40 million so shillings per cottage. So that's roughly? Oh, per cottage. Per cottage. Okay. And this is a properly done cottage. But otherwise, you can build domes. Mm -hmm. You can build budget accommodation where you have a campsite. I, you know, right. I'll, I'll, I'll still take you back to the people that probably live around the parks or people that have, have land around the parks. Mm -hmm. B setting up a campsite is not a very expensive venture. All you need to do is to have land, 
that you till, keep the land well, probably plant it up in grass, have some beautiful trees, and there you have a campsite. There you have a campsite. There you have a campsite. All you have to do is then build an abolition block, okay. which basically has your toilets, your bathrooms, and then have a kitchen somewhere yes. and build what you'd call the bar and restaurant. And that's a budget of roughly another 60 million? Probably another 60 or 70 million shillings. But if you all do right. it over time, mm -hmm. then you'd really, we are speaking about wholesome costs. But yes. if it's a project you're going to do over a given period of time, say probably prepare the campsite first, then have an abolition block, then build the kitchen in the next couple of months. And then build yeah. your main lodge area. Do it in phases. Do it in phases. Okay. Then probably then the cost you'll get the cost down. down. Okay. And then you'll be able probably there to attract the sort of market that you All want. All right. Thereafter. So we've seen acquiring land and also putting up, uh, quote unquote, um, affordable structures will cost us. Uh, let's just take it up. Let's mark it up because I know there are other little costs that mm -hmm. come in between to around 150 million Uganda shillings. There's also the other issue of HR, people to work for you. Yeah. I'm starting off, I don't need a big number. In the sector, what's the acceptable rate to pay maybe a chef or whatever caliber of an employee I want to bring in? It's a good question. <laughs> the average, I, I believe, the av you know, Uganda has no average wage, right. unfortunately. Yes. But I would believe somewhere in between 500,000 to a million shillings would be an average wage okay. to give to uh, somebody who is going to live out in the wild. Yes. And, you know, this is still little, but it is an average wage, I would say, in comparison to the Ugandan standards, mm -hmm. to have uh, a couple of staff in there to work for you. But I would say you, 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 you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. So it's if true. you have to, if you want to attract better quality staff, you have to pay them well. Mm -hmm. So speaking about the wage that you will have to pay, somebody who's going to work for you out at a lodge or at a, a campsite somewhere, or at your property, what you pay for is what you get. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is certainly good quality staff, but they will attract a little more. A little more. So let's yeah. talk of maybe a million each per Correct. month. And I've just started out. So in at a go, I can only take in, let's say, just 10 guests. Those are guests I can comfortably accommodate, mm -hmm. you know. So how many will I need of this 1 million? How mm -hmm. many will I need? I'm just a starter. If you're just a starter. How many employees? On average, you will need to service a, uh, to service a, a property mm -hmm. that will uh, be targeting just under 10 people. Yes. On you, this with property with can exclusive be and you know peculiar services. <laughs> well, you can you can you can actually pull it off with a minimum of about six. six and people. what this will mean okay. is that you have you have a chef, mm -hmm. you have uh, you have uh, the service the uh, the service uh, the customer relation team, which is basically the waiters that you have out there. And remember, because these lodges and hotels work in shifts. Mm -hmm. So whatever number you're looking at, you multiply by two mm -hmm. because there will be the shift change. But an average of six people can averagely and comfortably service, okay. uh, you know, 10 clients at any one given time. And it all comes down to efficiency all because right. there are other people who run more efficient, so more efficient, efficient models right. with less stuff. So let's just say my cost of starting out as an investor in, you know, getting into this tourism space will mm. cost me with the little charges in between and little costs that are not foreseen, mm. a rough figure of 300 million, comfortably, comfortably, yeah? You could, yeah. You yeah. could pull it off. <laughs> you could pull it off. You're like, it's still not enough. <laughs> no, you could pull it off. It depends. Yes. You see, at the end of the day, if you, if you are going to invest in anything, mm -hmm. you have to do a feasibility study. Right. You have to uh, probably start from the end by knowing what sort of customer you're going to target, what that customer wants, and then you structure or you build your structure or your lodge or your investment knowing who you are going to target at the end. Mm -hmm. For us as a... For, uh, I personally, with my rafting business, all I need is boats, jackets, helmets, paddles, and a good starting point and a good finish point. Right. Because there are different ways you can get around some of these costs. Mm. You could uh, do partnerships with different people. For example, 
all our lunch that we provide all our customers is not done by me. Right. Because probably my forte is not in the, in the, is not in the cooking. Mm -hmm. So Java House does supply all the sandwiches that our customers have. Mm -hmm. So then if it comes to um, uh, accommodation, we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, accommodation set up, but we know that our customers mm -hmm. would want accommodation. So we have the Tulina Riverside Lodge yes. that hosts our customers. You have the likes of a tourist bay in Ginger that will uh, accommodate your customers who want uh, budget accommodation. You have the likes of the Ginger Nile Resort who will take on the high-end customers. So you have the source of the Nile Hotel. So partnerships are key in solving All some right. of these investment challenges. Okay. Let's get to the issue of service delivery. At least now we have a rough figure. In case you're thinking of getting mm. into the space as an investor, you have the figures. In case you're looking into maybe getting into the space as a tourist, then we have the figures. But now, let's talk about the issue of service delivery, client experiences. I'm sure you and I have experienced this. Yeah. We are all black Africans. But when we go to um, spaces as tourists, in our own country, there's the issue of discrimination. Right, right straight from the waiters. They look at you and treat you a certain way, not because they're not trained, not because they know they're supposed to treat you amazingly by virtue of you being a client, but because of your race. You've seen that even in airports. Yeah. As rough to Uganda, what have you done to ensure that that is phased off and you fight that beat when it comes to your employees treating everyone excellently regardless of how they look? Well, uh, for starters, at Raft Uganda, we value all our customers and treat our customers equally, right. whether you're black or white. We do treat them equally. I will tell you uh, service, general service and gen general service delivery everywhere in Uganda is a problem. It's not just the tourism sector only. It is a problem. It is a problem. And this has been identified as a problem by various, uh, by various uh, individuals, right from the ministry, right to uh, the uh, tourism board, uh, right to the uh, various associations. We take this issue very, very seriously. And uh, different, we are, we are developing different means. One, training. Right. Training is a critical area. The training, training, training. And that's why the ministry, through uh, and Uganda Tourism Board, are trying to, uh, are trying to see to it that they revive uh, these tourism training institutes mm -hmm. and have uh, people go through there to understand what it means. But that said, discrimination is certainly a huge challenge right. in various, uh, in various uh, sectors. Especially the in the tourism industry. I, tourism don't want, I don't want to come and spend, you know, my 300 in one weekend <laughs> that is why wallowing because I'm not being treated well. I know. Yes. That is why you need to come to Raft Uganda because we value <laughs> and know that our customers <laughs> need to be treated well. But uh -huh. to us, every customer is the same. Right. And um, our, 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 our staff that we use are all Ugandan, surprising. Okay. They're all Ugandan and they know what it means for a Ugandan to come and pay his 200,000 shillings. Yes and come to enjoy an experience. So training. when somebody it's comes when. to pay, okay. training, we have trained our staff. Okay. I've been with my staff for a long, long time. And we seldom talk to, talk to them. We tell them what our client expects. We have customer feedback. If a customer gets to complain about- You take it up. We take it up. All right. And we have to make sure that uh, this is done. But okay. the other thing is that uh, one, uh, our staff, for example, at Raft Uganda, value value each and every customer quite highly, but they actually value Ugandan customers very, very highly. Because so training is key. Yeah, it's what key because the they know what you, own, what you are, the value for money. A Ugandan is spending his 200,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. It is hard and money. Yeah. And what does he expect? He's expecting a good service. So but the bottom line for the players in the industry is for them to embrace the importance of constant training. Never constant get comfortable. Constant training and right. have uh, operational manuals. You know what exactly every staff needs to stick to. Okay. It is, it is principle that customer gets there, needs to be treated this way, needs to be treated. So the it's operational a procedures. And the operational procedures, what I would term as an operations manual, has to be known and has to be on the fingertips of every staff. And at VA too. Constant supervision as well, but also having these employees love what they do. Mm. Once you have employees that love 
what they do, and they love the company that they're working for, and they know they're going to put a smile on somebody's face at the end of the day, it will be that point number one to make you comfortable when you're going out on a trip with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Because our, our business is adventure. Yes. You need to make sure that from the word go, you your, get it your right. client understands you, you know what your client's expectations and desires are, and it's that that you have to live with along, along the day to make sure that you have a happy client at the end of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those tips. I'm sure we've learned, I personally learned, that uh, I can also be an investor when I grow up. <laughs> yes, steadily. And you see, this sort yes. of investment we're yeah. speaking about yeah. is really for the budget. Right. But if you're going to go for the high end, who is going to charge top dollar for their accommodations, okay. then that cost can go up. 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for coming in studios. We certainly need to have this conversation again because there's a lot that we've not covered yet. Um, mm -hmm. Time is not on our side, so we'll keep this conversation going. Remember, the hashtag is Morning at NTV. Keep your views coming, and he'll be sure to look at some of those and maybe respond to them. My name is Malaki Bilodera. Morning at NTV still continues. Up next is Take Note. <laughs>